Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and we've got a doozy for you today. Oh, I've been waiting all off season for this. We did this at the Baseball Fantasy Fest a few months ago, and it was, well, about the most fun you could possibly have. So I wanted to bring that cast of characters back again, and this time we're doing the back-to-back again, which is we're going to snipe each other back and forth. It's myself. It's the Welsh. It's the Bogman and the Wonky Penguin herself, one of the best rankers in all of fantasy football, Kelly Kirby. We're going to be here, and Welsh and I are drafting back-to-back, and once again, Bogman and Kelly are going to draft back-to-back. So there's going to be a lot of insults hurled and a lot of, um, well, uh, moments, because that's what we do here. We make moments, and uh, we are here for your amusement and information. And if you want to have some fun with some real-life people making your mock draft dreams come true, the best way to do that is to right now, just after the show, or right now, even while you're watching the show, listening to those, you can still do it. Mock Draft Mondays are happening at Fantasy Pros from now until September. So join the excitement. You can mock draft for free in our Discord, right? Everybody knows our Discord, fantasypros.com slash chat. But what we're doing is we're providing access to our mock draft channels every single Monday for free. All day, all day, you can draft with our experts. Fellow fans, you don't want to draft against robots, that's fine. Go ahead and draft against some of these amazing people in our Discord. They are psychos. They're amazing at fantasy football. I know that because Kelly Kirby is one of them, and now she works for us. So go to fantasypros.com slash Monday. That's fantasypros.com slash Monday. And if you've got a case of the Mondays, well, we've got a mock draft to cure it. So go out there, check it out, join us. And lady and gentlemen, how great does the new interface of the Draft Wizard look? Draft Wizard... Got a little bit of a makeover here. Welsh, I know you had a little bit of a makeover too. Your hair looks fantastic today. Uh, better makeover, Bogman. Welsh's hair today or the new user interface here? Because this one, the bells, the whistles, I thought we couldn't squeeze any more in Bogs, but it looks like we can't. I've seen the haircut from the Welsh before, so it's definitely got to be the UI. <laughs> so uh, got a nice sexy facelift here. Uh, it looks awesome. Team needs are, are there. Ooh, yeah, uh, I like that pictures one. Pictures everywhere. I mean, it is nice and slick. I like it. Uh, Kelly, uh, I know like last time we did this was a baseball version. How much do you, is this like Christmas for you where you wait to draft next to Bogman and just irritate him the entire draft? Like, is this like right there? It's Christmas then this day? Yes, absolutely. Without any question, because I like any chance I get to be on a podcast with Boggs specifically so that I can make his life difficult. So, yes, very excited about that. And Welsh, you know, as we look through here to some of our favorite folks, DVR's in this, uh, Trusted Venom's at the top, Team 517, McFly flows in here, Hudat's in here, Smiler Rob, Young City. Welsh, you had all your picks there. You took the five spot. How do you feel about that, that I took the four in front of you for that first one instead of the six on the other side. You think that I made the wrong decision there in terms of trying to irritate you? Oh, no, this is fantastic. I mean, you're not going to take a running back at the top, so we're golden. If you want to take one to irritate me, which you're very good at, then maybe <laughs> it'll be a little bit. But no, I think actually think five is a really prime spot if you like running backs this year. Obviously, if you like wide receivers as well, but like that five spot, four, five, six, somewhere in there, you really are going to have that pick of, a uh, Brees Hall or a Bijan Robinson or something like that. Like that's that is the space that I kind of want to be in. So I'm I'm pretty stoked about it, and I am stoked to get into this brand new UI too. Oh, so, sweet. so it it looks great. Look, look at how good Christian yet. McCaffrey looks. Look at how good he looks at the tippy Christmas. top as the number one player as he should be, <laughs> not some nonsensical other running back like you didn't go what others one. might put. He did not go one on one because Venom went ahead and took Jamar Chase. We're off to the races here. CeeDee Lamb goes too. Oh my goodness. You keep it going. Jeffrey makes it to me. No, he does uh, not. Uh, wah, wah, wah. I found out what this is. It's the spike draft. That's what we're doing here. It's the spike <laughs> draft today. So Tyreek Hill to me, uh, I will go ahead and I'll take Tyreek Hill. But if McCaffrey was there at four, I would have done it. And the look on Welsh's face would have been worth everything all the work over the last 15 years to get here to this point to this moment to take him where possibly he could make it to fifth to you but welsh you did make a selection at five uh as you are on the clock now what is it 
It is going to be Mr. Now, I think there's a big debate on it. Bijan Robinson versus Brees Hall. I'm going to go with Bijan, uh, that uptick in offense, what he's going to do in the passing game. He will be everything. And uh, I think it really is tough. I have actually really battled between Brees and Bijan, but I am team Bijan right now. So that is where I'm going at five. Pretty happy about it. So like I said, five or six. It's a pretty sweet spot. Did consider Justin Jefferson. That one, uh, him being available to me definitely makes it a little bit tougher. But as we've talked about before, getting the elite, the in my personal opinion, the value of the elite running backs versus what happens at wide receiver in the second and third round. I just like the wide receivers quite a bit more than I like some of the running backs that are there. So to get this elite of elite, I'm very happy about it. And look, if you want to go out there, run the simulations again, check out this whole new refresh of Draft Wizard. We haven't had one in a little while, and now we've got it, and it is spectacular. Even on the draft board, you can see the player profiles on there. It's fantastic. I love it. It looks so good. Nobody has a dev team as good as our dev team. Shout out to that gang. They are terrific. They are doing just amazing work here. And just when you thought it couldn't get any better, it does. It's funny. At four, I was contemplating Amon Ra or Tyree Kill going back and forth, to be honest with you. So it's interesting. Amon Ra, St. Brown, doesn't go till eight. Jefferson goes at seven, Brees Hall at six, right after you took uh, Bijan Robinson Welsh. So here we go. So it begins after Amon Ra at 108, AJ Brown at 109, Garrett Wilson at 110, Scott Bogman. You took a running back. No surprise there. Who was it? Yeah, it was JT. And, and honestly, there's so much here. I, I don't, I don't know that Wonky can really screw up my plan. There's a possibility. But I, I I don't know. There's just, there's just so much at the end. That's why I like picking at the end here. Famous well, last words. Clip that for right. later in the draft. <laughs> Very as true. As soon as Wonky I'm takes that here tight in end. Spot. Yeah, in this spot. Wonky takes a tight end, and that's going to screw did. all up. No, no, she still did it because I like to <laughs> no. take running back and wide receiver, and those were the two wide receivers. I thought, no way she skips a running back. We're on the end. But she yeah. did. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. I'll take Jameer Gibbs. Great picks, uh, Kelly. Awesome. Uh, Kelly, by the way, I mean, you went full Joey P on that turn there. You had Puka yeah. Dakua and Marvin Harrison Jr., two wide receivers. So question, why not a Jameer Gibbs? Why not a Saquon? Why did you decide doubling up a wide receiver at the turn was a way for you in this PPR draft? I, I have decided I mock draft with a bunch of our Discord users today, and I stayed away from Gibbs and Barkley every single time. And I think part of it is uh, with Gibbs. I don't know. I, I'm a little leery of that Lions offense, especially if Montgomery you know, stays around at all. But Barkley is just too much of an injury risk for me. I don't, Fair enough. I, Fair I enough. just don't, I don't trust it. And I don't want to use a first or, you know, the first pick of the second round on him either. So. So Bogman old school, it's uh, it's still 2001 here for Scott Bogman in the draft. Actually, does it have a draft setting here, a draft wizard where you could set it to like 1998, where you always just take two running backs first uh, Boggs. I just want to, I just want to do Bogman bots. I want to just completely draft against Bogman bots. Uh, but you took Jameer Gibbs, who I feel great about Boggs. Like I have him yes. ranked fourth overall. I have him ahead of Jonathan Taylor personally in my rankings. You can see them at fantasypros.com. But tell me about the other side of that coin. So Kelly still has some reservations potentially about the Lions, potentially about Gibbs with Montgomery there. I don't. Uh, where do you stand here? Because you took Gibbs. Yeah, it's it's not my favorite strategy, and I know I'm the running back guy, and it took two running backs here, but it, it absolutely is not my favorite strategy at the end to do two running backs. I usually like to take a running back and a wide receiver because you just don't know how the runs are going to be, and we're on the end, right? So I like to have both. But Kelly took the two wide receivers that I felt were acceptable there, and I, I skipped down to, um, you know, if we're splitting hairs between Gibbs and Saquon, I think Gibbs is going to be catching more passes. This is a PPR league. Um, we've heard um, Dan Campbell talk about how Gibbs is going to be used more. And Coach Speak Index says he is the least of the liars of the coaches. So <laughs> I expect it to be more uh, touches for Jameer Gibbs this year. Here you go. The least of the liars. I like that. That's that's a pretty good ringing endorsement there. Welsh, I know you're up on the clock here. Let's go through Saquon, Travis Etienne at 204. Devontae Adams at 205, Drake London 206, Jalen Waddle at 207. Look at that. This is what happens when you draft with the real folks. Laporta at 208 to you, Welsh. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I uh, I was battling. I had kind of actually resigned myself to like Chris Olave and a few of the, and Devontae Adams weren't going to be there. Olave did end up being there, but I decided to go with where my pivot started to be in that we are in a space where I felt like 
quite a few of the wide receivers were solid values. There's still some solid values at running back. And I wanted to get an elite tight end. And I thought with eight picks between, there was no chance I was, I mean, I could be wrong about this and Kelsey could come back to me, but I didn't think I'd see Laporta and Kelsey coming back. And that I felt that the level of wide receiver, if that's where I want to go, was still going to be there as well as the running back. So uh, I went with the best available player in there and getting an elite, elite tight end. So I don't have to mess around with it and I don't have to be Bogman who gets is going to get all pissed off in this draft because every time he wants a tight end, it doesn't fall to him. I'm just taking Laporta and I'm getting my guy and I'm going to take the top player at that position. I love it. This is an aggressive second round. Laporta to you. Ooh. Waddle went right before that. Then I took Pittman, Chris Olave, Devon Achan goes in the second round here. Then Mahomes and Ayuk at the turn at 2-3. It's coming back to me pretty soon. Now I took Pittman here again. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the Colts as a team that I think really has a chance to win that division this year. I love Shane Steichen as an offensive mind. Having Anthony Richardson throwing the ball this year is going to be fantastic. I love that Mahomes in this draft went behind, excuse me, ahead of Allen, which is where my rankings are too. So it's really interesting, again, when you're drafting with the Sharps here, which is what, you know, mock draft, free mock draft season is all about here. Again, fantasypros.com slash Monday. That's the place to be. Now it's a matter of what running back do I want as my hero? And uh, there's one guy that is clearly my hero, and he's going to lead the league in rushing this year. He's the one, the only, Derrick Henry. So I'm going to take my hero right here. (laughs) I still love all of the different wide receivers. Well, did I hear a Chia? Out of you? I believe it was a, a Chia. <laughs> I mean, I am kicking myself now because Kelsey did not go in there. I wanted Derrick Henry hoping you would take an elite tight end, but no. you sure didn't, <laughs> you scam artist. Um, well, here's why I didn't Welsh too, is because I really do like the varying values at tight end. I don't mind Laporta Kelsey's second, third round. That's perfectly fine for me. I think that's good value. I like that run where you have the Kincaids and McBrides, and I like the run where you have later on potentially Pitts and Ingram. So I think. There's a lot of appropriate value, but depending on which specific guys, like in this case, if Henry wasn't on the board, you're right. I probably would have pivoted to Kelsey, but the King was, and the King is now going to uh, hold court on my roster. Well, I'm kicking myself a little bit. Kelsey has still not gone. I ended up going with Mike Evans, taking the best lift as far as wide receiver that's out there. High touchdown equity. I like DJ Moore. Uh, I'm actually kind of a Cooper Cup guy, but we were changing values. This is the last wide receiver that was in the full tier three of ECR, if you're looking. And he kind of ended out that tier. I'm not loving where everything is at. Like, I guess hindsight, I probably would have taken Olave and then I would have taken Laporta. So there's not that much of a difference. So I shouldn't kick myself. But I really was sitting here going, boy, I'm going to walk into round four with Derrick Henry, Bijan Robinson, and Sam Laporta. And I was doing the dance a little too quick. So you know what, <laughs> Joe, you don't like what we're doing here. You did it. I didn't I think know. you were going to get me. You already got me. There you go. It only took, well, so far it took uh, one pick for Wonky Penguin and three picks for me to upset somebody you haven't upset me yet welsh yet i'm gonna say yet but we'll see how it goes also if you're trying to see how things go this nfl season it's a great thing to do is to go out there and try your hand at a little bit of sports wagering if you've never done before it's a great time to go out there and try we have a ton of content here the betting pros app is going to help you you can sync your sports books for free to that but we also have a deal here going on with DraftKings Sportsbook and we want to help educate you out there for those of you who play fantasy you're trying to learn a little bit more about you know sports wagering specifically betting on football which is coming up before you know it download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now use that promo code fantasy pros one word fantasy pros and if you're a new customer you get 150 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five bucks only on DraftKings the crown is yours let's continue on and see how the mock is going after Mike Evans goes to the Welsh a very solid pick here so you've got your your uh, tight end, your wide receiver, your running back. Welsh is very, very kind of balanced offensive approach. Rashad White went next, one of my favorites at 306. Isaiah Pacheco at 307. Kyron Williams at 308. Debo Samuel, DJ Moore, and then Boggs. Kelsey, all the way to you. How do you feel about that? Oh, we're feeling so much better about this draft at this point, <laughs> by the way. Travis Kelsey uh, this round, I think, is just unbelievable value for what he is. And then Malik Neighbors, who might lead the league in targets because there's nobody else in New York. Hopefully, Daniel Jones stays upright or somebody stays upright to throw him the football. That is a main concern with Malik, but nobody else is there. So I'm really excited about those two picks. Uh, I would be too. That is one of the later Travis Kelsey picks I've seen. Wonky, you continue to assassinate all uh, wide receiver options on the board here. DK Metcalf and then 
James Cook next here. So you got your running back. You got your third wide receiver who is a wide receiver one in his offense. Let's talk about this wonky penguin, these two selections, especially Cook, and whether or not you feel comfortable with him as your lead RB on this roster. Absolutely not. Um, whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> My I was gonna pick two tight ends. I was just gonna pick like five tight ends, but then uh Kelsey <laughs> fell, so whatever. Um yeah, no, I, I I feel like Buffalo is also kind of in that same sort of messy, but I really didn't want Kamara. Um, so that's the one that I looked over to get to cook, but this is where I'm going to do my running back run and just accumulate all of them. Cause now I've got like three wide receiver ones. So. Oh yeah. I, and I love this approach of the turn to me. You can go out there and I'm so glad you took Harrison too, because I just think Harrison's going to, so far exceed all expectations this year. It's not even funny. After Cook, Boggs, you took Malik Neighbors at 402, one of your favorites. Now, I understand great talent, great kid, great opportunity, but he is playing with Daniel Jones, who has shown some limitations and some health issues throughout his career. So do you feel like he is, despite the fact you have Kelsey already ahead of him, that can be your number one guy in terms of pass catching on a fantasy roster? I do for PPR. Right. Because I just like I said before, I think the dude is going to get peppered with targets. There's just not a lot of talent on this roster. You take away Saquon as well. Um, there's just so many targets that are going to be force fed to him. So yes. I just think that he is going to be pelted with targets every single game. But do you get right. points when Daniel Jones overthrows him by four yards with all of those? Targets? No, but okay. but a blind squirrel finds a nut twice a day. And Malik Neighbors can do a lot with the football. Yeah, I think two catches game, a so. game sounds about right. It sounds about right. He'll get two fifty yards on, on eight two targets. Catches. Yeah, or nine targets, two catches. Here's a question for you, Boggs. Cooper Cup went right after. Cooper Cup mm -hmm. has had obvious monster seasons. I understand the injuries for him the last couple of years, the age, all those questions. You feel better about looking to the future already. I know you're the dynasty host around here, but this is a real question here. This is redraft here. You would rather look ahead to neighbors than in the past to Cooper Cup already. Yeah, I mean, Cooper Cup is, you know, over 30 at this point. He missed a bunch of time last season. I think he's he's on the downtick here. I don't think it's shameful, and it doesn't mean he's bad. It just means he's on the downtick. So uh, give me the ascending talent, especially when I'm looking for a number one. And the ascending talent it is. All right, this is some fun. So I'm enjoying this draft immensely already. Uh, and it's fun, too. they got some real people who obviously have done their homework because some guys have gone in this next round and a half that are some of our quote-unquote favorite players. Alvin Kamara at 404, then Jalen Hurts at 405, Mari Cooper next, Stefan Diggs, Welsh. Who did you take at 408? As I know you're on the board here for 10 seconds. Uh, you went wide receiver, chilling to build up that room. So who was it? I went with Devonta Smith, and then I just tagged him with Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is actually someone I was looking at last round as well. Uh, just big play options, hopefully on the touchdown side. Big offenses as well. I've been looking at some of the quarterbacks. Anthony Richardson went two picks before you. There's a couple quarterbacks still on the board. Just kind of trying to feel that out. The running back room is a little eh. There are still really solid wide receivers, and I've been trying to do this as of recent. This is like the hero running back, you know, the superhero running back in Bijan. And then I have built up a three wide receiver core with Sam Laporta. So one thing I'm trying not to do is taking an early investment in Sam Laporta. Sometimes what you can do is you can then start to have like a lack in your wide receiver core. Maybe, oh, because I got Sam Laporta, he can be a wide receiver one, wide receiver one. Maybe I won't take these other guys. I'm not letting that happen. I'm having a strong, an RPV type of thing, Joe. I'm having mm -hmm. a strong wide receiver two in Devonta Smith, which I got value on, a strong wide receiver three in Zay Flowers. And I'm letting the core of the wide receivers and tight ends hold up this team while passing on some players that, like I said, I've, I've kind of wanted to go in a few other directions, but I'm really happy with Smith and Zay Flowers. I do feel my team is lacking the excitement I wanted Malik Neighbors earlier. Bogman sucks, mm -hmm. and he did that. You guys all <laughs> suck with all your picks. So I feel like my team is living a little boring right now, but I'm hoping that the projections and the uh, the assessment at the end is going to favor the Welsh. That is what yeah. we're hoping. House Welsh. <laughs> let it, let it, House Welsh shall reign supreme. Mm -hmm. uh, I took Lamar Jackson at 409. I could not believe he was still floating there. And I had a choice, too. Trey McBride or him. McBride went right after, but I was looking at the tight ends. McBride, Andrews, Kincaid were also on the board. And then it was either Lamar or Anthony Richardson here on my personal ranks. And for me, I'm just going to take the sure thing here with Lamar. Uh, I just felt really good about that selection. Oh. And sure enough, one of the tight ends made it back to me, Mark Andrews. So I paired them together. 
after I took Lamar, Trey McBride went, then Christian Kirk, then Joe Mixon at 412. 501, my boy, Terry McLaurin. This is the earliest I've seen anybody take him in the fifth round. Good on you, Venom. Good on you. You must be using the joke he's a cheat sheet Venom. today. Seriously. Uh, George Pickens <laughs> next, and Anthony Richardson. Then I took Andrews. Welsh took Zay Flowers. Then Ken Walker at 506. Josh Jacobs at 507. Kincaid to Smiler Rob. He's happy about that one. T. Higgins was the other guy I was considering. Man, what a great value. 509, that's just crazy on him. Uh, Scranton then took Keenan Allen. Scott Bogman, you took Jaden Reed. Let's go jump to Wonky's two picks there, too. The first one of hers, and then we'll take both of yours, Boggs. Deontay Johnson at the turn to end the fifth round. And then to begin the sixth round, we'll talk about hers as well, which is Najee Harris. So uh, a former Steeler and a current Steeler. So there you go. <laughs> Just kind of rubbing Bogman's face right in it. Just right in it here at the turn. Kelly, let's talk about these two selections. Well, first of all, I, I was telling the Discord channel today uh, about Deontay Johnson and that if if he doesn't hit this year, I'm going to have words with like six fantasy pros analysts when we get together <laughs> next, um, because it's all I've heard all offseason is about how great he's going to be. And I'm like, OK, well, if you all believe Bryce Young can throw, then I guess we can do this. But but I do like him there just because there is the possibility he would also get peppered with targets and some of them may hit him in the hands. And who knows? Oh, um perfect. And with Najee Harris, I just think that I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like with, uh, what's his face? I I'm know what that was. Names. <laughs> what's yeah. his name? The Arthur, Arthur with him there. I feel like they're going to oh, run Arthur Smith. a ton. Yes. Yeah. Like yes. the old movies in the eighties, the, hey, yeah. everybody, the British man. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, I, I'm sure drink. all the YouTube audience loves a good. It's Arthur a good reference. It's a really good <laughs> reference for you. Like 20 year olds for bring the, the card around. That's I don't I don't bring the card around. <laughs> God, Dudley Moore. There's not enough Dudley, Dudley Moore. Moore. There you go. Oh my God. Wow. I think they did a new one though with Russell Brand, didn't they? Uh, well, I don't know if we're allowed he's, to talk about He's still currently things. playing that role though. I, <laughs> still, I was going to say, it's a, that's a method acting <laughs> bit. Yeah. Uh, but Deontay Johnson, Kelly, I mean, you think about it from a PPR league standpoint, you have to imagine the targets are going to be there from what you saw out of Adam Thielen last year. I mean, talk about nobody thought Adam Thielen could be good. And last year he was. I think you have to hold out some hope that Canales can bring over some of that magic from the Geno Smith makeover to the Baker Mayfield makeover and help Bryce Young get there as well. Scott Bogman, you took Jaden Reed and then Ramondre Stevenson. Really nice as your third running back. Now I'm mad at you because that's who I wanted to take here. So let's talk about this selection. Well, it wasn't uh, Kelly that got me uh, in this turn. It was Young City with T Higgins and then oh. Dask over here with Keenan Allen. I wanted one of these uh, vets uh, to pair with Malik Neighbors, but they both went in front of me. I saw Jaden Reed as the next best wide receiver, so I snagged him. And Stevenson was just the best player on the board. It was between Stevenson and Najee for me. Kelly made it easy for me. I probably would have taken Najee, Najee because I also like the fact that he's in Arthur Smith's system. I think there's a lot of touchdown opportunity for him, but alas, I did not get him. So Ramondre is just in for a heavy workload in New England. So I went ahead and uh, picked up Stevenson. Boy, Joe, can I tell you one cool new feature? This is in the new UI. I just want to point out like for everybody, like the, the new interface just kind of dropped. This is something that wasn't there before. This might be the most valuable tool of all time, especially if you've ever got that little dictation that's like, hey, by the way, your entire team is on bye week in week 14. <laughs> Next to the player, they've got these little exclamations that are already telling you what this player might have against your own personal team. So not just even team needs. If you click on it in the UI, as you guys can see, it'll be like, hey, this guy is battling up against your player on this. Hat tip to our team. That is actually very cool because I've gotten that warning a couple times in mock drafts before and real drafts. In, in real life and in the fantasy life, all of those yes. things. Uh, yes. We also have uh, a lot of good players going off the board here. Aaron Jones, Chris Godwin, James Conner, DeAndre Swift at 606, and Christian Watts, I can't believe. DVR, seriously, we're going to have words after this draft. Uh, 607, again, I'm seeing McLaurin and Watson go so much earlier than we're used to. Then, Welsh, you went QB, CJ Stroud at 608. Yes, I was very excited about that because I had considered taking him uh, one little round before. Also, let's go look at the difference in value between Anthony Richardson, I think, who was the last quarterback, and then waiting like two more rounds for me to get Stroud. So I'm, pr again, pretty ecstatic about that in trying to build out this really balanced team. You know, Maybe not one single part is as elite as another, but I'm just trying to build out the balance. And getting a quarterback like, quarterback like that in the sixth round in CJ Stroud, very happy about. 
And okay, after you went ahead and selected CJ Stroud, I took my second RB with Zamir White because they were flying off the shelf here. David Montgomery at 6'10", and uh, Raheem Mostert at 6'11", then Tank Dell at the turn to Venom with Brian Robinson, Kyle Pitts at 702, Jonathan Brooks, again, this is an aggressive room. Jonathan Brooks, 703. That's one of the earlier times I've seen him recently go to. I ended up taking Calvin Ridley at 704. There's a couple wide receivers going back and forth. I would have taken Rice, but again, the looming potential of the suspension really just it keeps sticking in my craw, and I can't get past that this early. I need a little bit more of a discount there. Then, Welsh, you went with your second RB, too. It's Tony Pollard at 705. So can Tony Pollard bring back that good feeling? for fantasy managers in 2024 after really disappointing everybody last year. That's the hope. Uh, it's I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted Calvin Ridley. You absolutely sniped the crap out of me. I was going to go. <laughs> I thought he was the top player to put in the flex. I didn't think any of the other guys warranted as like a no brainer. Cause I agree with you on Rishi Rice. You could argue like Hollywood Brown, DeAndre Hopkins and stuff like that. But like Calvin Ridley was just so much more valuable than anybody else. So once you did that, I just decided to come back and pivot into running back. Cause I only had one. One. Uh, obviously there's like questions and what he's going to be in that offense, but Spears being the piece that's blocking him versus another guy that was available in like Jalen Warren, like even if they split that Najee's going to be the top guy. So I'm not in love with this pick. This is still a, probably about balancing out this whole team and uh, you snipe me again. So get out of here. Get off my, get off my lawn. There, get Joe. off my lawn. Young. Uh, I'll have to get old man Joe out here. Uh, speaking of things you got to get out and do, you got to get out there and, live your life it's not just fantasy stuff here you gotta go out there you gotta go to some games you gotta go to some concerts maybe see a comedy show like me maybe take in a little wwe action whatever it is that you are into go and use the game time app because uh you know you gotta get out there it makes you a a more fully formed human being and you want to you know cleanse your soul a little bit i went to the foo fighter concert in new york a couple weeks ago so much fun got to take my daughters to that love going to concerts if you are like me and you love live events game time is the way to do it the best thing about game time too is you can see the view from all your seats, which is great. I want to know exactly what I'm getting myself into, especially different venues have different looks. You want to make sure if you've never been there before that your seats that you're paying for are going to be good. Also all the pricing, all everything that's featured there. There's no surprise fees at the checkout or anything else. What you see is what you pay, which is a nice change of pace too. So download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code fantasy pros. You can remember that that's easy. You get $20 off your first purchase. The terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code F-A-N-T-A-S-Y-P-R-O-S, $20 off. So download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. That, my friends, is the Game Time app. We are rocking and rolling here, too, by the way. Uh, after Tony Power goes, Joe Burrow, Devin Singletary, Rushy Rice does go in round seven. Then we have a little tight end run. Evan Ingram and George Kittle before it gets to Bogman, who takes DeAndre Hopkins at 7-11. Uh, let's talk about the Hopkins pick first here. Would you have taken Ridley or Hopkins? If I guess the question is, if both were on the board, who would you have taken this year, Hopkins or Ridley? Ridley. I, I had Ridley as my next guy. And then my second guy was Rishi Rice, who Smiler Rob took. So great mm -hmm. picks by you guys, you gentlemen. Uh, I'll call you here in, uh, in public. Uh, but for me, uh, DeAndre Hopkins was the next best. He's a veteran, too. I have some youth here with Malik and Jaden Reed. Uh, deep threat and Will Levis threw the ball deep more than any other quarterback. I think his second highest deep ball rate in NFL history since they started recording it in 2008 on PFF at least. So um, I think Hopkins is going to be open. There's going to be other wide receivers there to take a, a roll, a little coverage towards. So I think it could be a better year for Hopkins. Who that just pissed me off with a lad McConkey pick more on that in a minute. Wonky penguin. You went out there again, aggression, ruthless aggression. That's Jeez. kind of where we're at here. Jaden Daniels, Hollywood Brown, <laughs> I almost took Brown where I was over Ridley there, just going, hey, I want to take the guy with the better quarterback. But again, I'm just not sure how Hollywood Brown fits in with this offense. It's a little tough to see. It's tough to see with Ridley also. Again, these are kind of that moment in the draft where you kind of have to have a little faith in some of the things. So Daniels and Brown, wonky, break down those picks for me. First of all, I went to Foo Fighters last night. So ah. I was 
I was a little afraid yeah. I wasn't going to be able to hear any of you. <laughs> that would have been a plus, I think. For the it, most part, but, there are yeah. moments where I think that would have been, but um, yeah, sure. no, I'm a little in love with uh, Jaden Daniels. I don't know if that's just because I keep editing Fitz's stuff, um, but I, <laughs> I, because <laughs> he's in love with him. Um, but yeah. from that point, I mean, I think if he does do what he's like capable of doing, I think he's going to rush for some to throw for some. I, I just like his upside. And if this was a normal draft, I would definitely take a second quarterback later to try to balance that out a little bit. But, um, and then with Hollywood Brown, I hate taking Kansas city wide receivers, but last year I took Rashi race and that worked out pretty well for me. Mm-hmm. I am nervous about the suspension and it's Mahomes. I just feel like he'll figure out how to use him. So that's, yeah, my... that's kind of where I feel too. It's like, I think he's got some big games there, but the consistency could be a little off, but I look at maybe it's a time where Hopkins just kind of might fall off the cliff. You know, we're getting very close to that too. When you're in the league for 10 years, the, the clock is really ticking. Keon Coleman, you balance that out, Bog. So Hopkins, you went old man Hopkins and young man Coleman. What are your expectations for him? Because if you look at Keon Coleman and you look at some of the projections for him, 58 catches, 773 yards, five touchdowns. Do you think he makes those projections or breaks them? I think that's low. I think there's an opportunity for a bunch of guys in Buffalo, not just Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman's the guy that I would pick, but Dalton Kincaid could lead this team in targets. It could be Coleman. It could be Curtis Samuel. Khalil Shakir could take a step up. We just don't know. Obviously, a lot of targets go out the window when they traded Stephon Diggs. So uh, there's just a lot of opportunity there. I think he's super underrated. I think he gets buried a little bit because this wide receiver draft class is so good. I think you see other guys happen like that too. Lad went after him, and I was debating between those two guys with that pick. So um, lots of good rookies here and a potential to be a number one for Josh Allen, I think is a pretty good spot. So uh, I'm in on Keon Coleman for sure. I don't know what happened to me here in this draft box, but all of a sudden I became the uh, veteran value enforcer in this draft, and I hate this. Like I hate You're the bank. <laughs> I hate that they have driven me to this in this room, but again, you know, it's a good group that we're drafted with again. Keon Coleman goes, then at 803, Kyler Murray, Jalen Warren, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, Lad McConkey, who that right from under me. And then to make it worse, Diviar took Xavier Worthy, both the guys out of my queue. Welsh, you went Roma Dunze at 808. We'll get to both of your picks in just a second. I took Portland Sutton at 809. Curtis Samuel goes at 810, then Javante Williams, Tajay Spears, Chase Brown, also out of my queue. I was hoping he would make it back to me. He did not. Jamison Williams, then Brian Thomas at 903, then I took Zeke. So in a row, Ridley, Cortland Sutton, Zeke Elliott. This sounds like a fun team from like, I don't know, a couple of years ago. So we'll see how this goes for me when the uh, draft wizard gives us a grade here at the end. But I will say this. I keep looking around. Boggs, maybe you can answer this too for me real quick. You know, the the Cowboys running back room, I know Rico Dowdle had some moments last year, but it seems kind of like we're just back to Ezekiel Elliott kind of being the one and, and getting the goal line touches. And to me, that's enough. What do you make of Elliott's return here? Do you think he's dust or you think he's got one more good year left in him? No, I think he's done. So I, I'm I'm avoiding Zeke. I think you're right. I think especially early in the season when he does have a little juice left, they give the ball to him mainly. I don't hate Deuce Vaughn. I know he's tiny uh, and people are, um, you know, avoiding him because of that. And maybe this is just a complete reach, but because we don't know what that backfield is going to be, I mean, Deuce Vaughn carried the load to Kansas State and they ran the ball a ton. So there's just a lot there for him. So I, I kind of like Deuce as a like late, late dart throw. I don't even know if this draft is deep enough to take him, but I would, I would prefer Rico over Zeke um, because he goes a little bit later. And I just think Zeke Mm -hmm. is probably done. Makes sense. All right, let's go to Welsh here. Roma Dunze, Austin Eckler, a former first rounder. Well, she got him in the ninth round. So can Eckler get back to fantasy relevancy this year? And can Roma Dunze carve out a role as the third guy with a rookie QB? Well, I fell over in my chair. Nice to talk to you guys again. It's been a while. Uh, but I fell over in my chair when uh, that was like 12 minutes ago when Xavier Worthy went in front of me again. It, unbelievable. I thought at five, I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to be all right. Like, I'm not going to get sniped. Like, I couldn't even believe that Worthy oh, went that one. And McConkey back to back. That that's ridiculous. Me. So I, I wanted to stick with that same vibe and I wanted to go with the upside of the rookie wide receivers. Rookie wide receiver upside is always a huge payoff every year. They're going lower. And then 
if I can even get midway through the year and they become the guy, boom, golden for me. And he's my fourth wide receiver. So that was good. Eckler, here's why he can. Because his expecta expectations are so much different than they have been in the past. I still think he's going to be a big red zone option for that team. Obviously, you know, inside the one or two, it's going to be Brian, Brian Robinson. But I think Eckler is going to be more involved than a lot of people think. He is my third running back. It's not the best spot I wanted to be in. But again, I can't I can't have anything nice. Blake Corum just went in front of me. So I can't have no things nice. So I have some bounce backs I'm trying to buy in on Pollard and Eckler. I'm willing to do that when I have such a good... Um, uh, floored wide receiver core. And that's what I have right now. And I, and I know a lot of people play the opposite end where they're like, oh, I'm going to take the upside running backs. I'm trying to do that. But I think you can take the upside in uh, previously stud running backs with this wide receiver core that I have. All right, let's continue on. Minutes. All right, yeah, we'll see you soon, buddy. Well, right, put thanks. your feet up. Uh, actually, you could talk about your pick right now. If now, nah, you know what? No, I want you to. No, wait. no, no, no. Let's make it. Let's <laughs> no, no. Now you have to wait. Twelve minutes. So Austin Eckler goes at nine oh five, then Jerome Ford at nine oh six, Jordan Love, Zach Moss. Uh, so Moss still now going later, by the way, than Chase Brown. Something to note here in this round: the worm is turning there. Jordan Addison, Gus Edwards, Scott Bogman. You went and did it. Nine eleven, Nick Chubb. Let's talk about it. Yeah, look, he's my fourth running back. I already have Taylor and Gibbs and Ramondre Stevenson. So even if he starts the year on the pup, I don't need him for a little bit. And, you know, this is one of the backs that might be a freak of nature. He's already been, uh, we saw him all uh, pressing 540 the other day. Um, he looks healthy uh, for a, a major knee injury that really looked nasty. I mean, we really weren't sure. But if he's already doing that, I think he's going to be back and that's still going to be a run first team because Deshaun Watson sucks. So if there's anyone that can push Jerome Ford out of a starting job real fast, it is a stud like Nick Chubb. So as my fourth running back this late, I'm more than willing to take the risk. I wanted him so bad. I wanted him so bad coming <laughs> back as my fourth. I so agree with you. That's another yeah, well, one. See, you didn't I, have to wait that long to, to speak. Welsh, there you hey, go. I love it. Uh, by the way, well, screw you for taking Dowdle right before me, too. Ooh, yes. Take know, the whole cowboy spicy. backfield. More Suck on it, that in a second. That's a tease. <laughs> uh, Trey Benson goes at the turn to Wonky Penguin uh, and Josh Palmer. So Benson and Palmer uh erickson has been making a lot of noise about josh palmer i'm not convinced he's not just like a, a decent league average kind of guy but even league average it's it's kind of looking at herbert's there you they're gonna throw the ball more than people realize i think that's a little overblown this oh my god now that harbaugh is there they're never gonna throw the ball again that's ludicrous it's stupid some the defense still there. sucks and the defense still sucks. And that division, you're right and they're playing a division with the chiefs so i mean there's a lot to unpack there so where do you stand with these two picks here with Josh Palmer and Trey Benson? Because Benson's more of a long-term selection where you're trying to wait for him, Kelly, right, to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, pop off or maybe an injury opens up or some earlier play for him. What do you make of these two guys in 2024? So here's the situation. Um, I have terrible running backs. And so at this point, I'm just going to collect all of the handcuffs and then just sure. for the, especially for the guys that I see as like a little bit closer to the maybe fall off the edge or uh, injury risk. And I feel like Connor kind of has those moments where he doesn't look quite as good as he, people are drafting him as. Um, and then, yeah, the same thing, like this is, I, I would like all of the listeners to know that this is what sucks about being an editor here is you read 16,000 words from <laughs> Andrew Erickson and like 8,000 of them are about Josh Palmer and you just can't <laughs> get past it. So when he's there or like, Oh, I guess I'll take him too. Like, yeah. So that's what's happening right now is I'm desperate at running back and I read too much Erickson. So yeah. Yeah, that's a bad combination of things. Scott Bogman, you went and took Dak Prescott, a guy who finishes QB3 last year, and you got him all the way in the 10th round. That's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, we just talked about uh, how the Cowboys lack a true running game this season. So I think Dak is going to be relied on more than any other season that he really has. So uh, for waiting so long to take a QB, I thought I got a really good deal there. Certainly feels like one there. After you took Prescott at 10.03, Zach Charbonnet, Brock Purdy at 10.04, Blake Corm at 10.05, Tyler Lockett at 10.06, then Jaleel McLaughlin, who I was going to take, and I said, oh, that's all right, I'll take Dowdle, and then Welsh, you took Dowdle, you jerk. So how does it feel to uh, screw me out of the uh, the other part of the Cowboys' backfield? Feels right, Brian. Feels right. Feels good. <laughs> Feels good. No, everything's turning around. Everything's coming back up Welsh when I can get you a little, little frazzled and everything like that. I, I, I will be honest with you. Like, I haven't had a draft in quite some time. 
where I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm going to be slick. And then every, I mean, Don Tavian Wicks <laughs> just went in front of me. And I was yeah, like, was me. there's no chance. He's down the list. And then whammy. And it just keeps happening to me. So uh, again, testing your mock draft skills, always important to know where to pivot. I pivot to Romeo Dobbs, trying to get a wide receiver in that offense as they're going to be slinging it. We've seen weeks where he has been the number one guy when Christian Watson falls off and dis disappears. Jaden uh, Reed, obviously we love, but uh, Dobbs was a nice like kind of kickback, but Wicks has been getting so much run on that offense. I just didn't think it was going to happen, but you do have to remember, even in this, you're getting a lot of like, you know, what experts are suggesting what the pick predictor, will this guy be available? It can't, it can't hold your hand for the buzziness of players that are out there and what's going to happen and the hurt that happens when you get sniped. And now well, you all the buzzy pain. guys, I like Christian Watson went at six Oh seven. That's the earliest I've seen him. Terry McLaurin in the fifth round. That's earlier than we've been accustomed to. I would have taken him in the fifth round at five Oh four, but I've been super aggressive. So has Derek been there and I'm of the mind. If I don't get Watson, well then Wicks is the other pivot to me. And that's where I went. I took Jacoby Myers first though at ten Oh nine. Then Brandon Cooks went Caleb Williams, Jake Ferguson, Kendra Miller at 11.01. Then in the 11th round at the second spot here, David Njoku, Josh Downs, Dontavian Wicks to me, Romeo Dobbs to the Welsh, Brock Bowers to DBR at 11.06, Chuba Hubbard, Rashid Shahid, Marshawn Lloyd, Jerry Judy, and then Boggs. You took Jahan Dots. And before we get to yours, let's get to the Wonky Penguins. Two choices here, Pat Fryermuth, Ty Chandler. Fryermuth, I'm looking for a rebound season, a bounce back, if you will. So you went late tight end. Wonky, are you happy with how that's worked out getting Fryermuth as that person? Um, no, I'm a little mad at Team 517 for taking two tight ends. Um, I was kind of hoping <laughs> Njoku would make it his way back or I could steal Bowers. Um, so yeah, after that started, I like Fryermuth. I think, you know, anything has got to be an upgrade in quarterback play. And that's, I mean, I mean it might not be a large upgrade, but um, I feel like he'll have somewhat of a bounce back here and then staying with my running backs, most likely to get injured and being a Vikings fan. I'm like, oh, that Aaron Jones will be down by week four. So Chandler should be up then. So. Sounds about right. Uh, Bogman, after you took Dotson, it came back to you, took Ray Davis too. So let's talk about those two picks, what your expectations are for Dotson and how much work Ray Davis can get this year as a rookie. Yeah, I mean, Dotson, I think, should probably go a little bit higher than this, but this is what he's shown us, right? He has been bad uh, in his NFL career so far. Hopefully, with Cliff Kingsbury and a new quarterback there, pass-heavy offense, he can finally get some usage. And Ray Davis, I mean, we saw Josh Allen score 15 touchdowns last year. If there's a reason he won't, it's Ray Davis. Ray Davis is really good at short yardage. He's really good at pushing the pile, and they brought him in here because they don't want to run their golden boy at the goal line as much as possible. So I think it's a um, it's a touchdown upside play. If anything happens to James Cook, I'm really golden with Ray Davis. I think he's a really good back. So, you know, kind of two risky picks, but that's where we are in the draft at this point. Yeah, it's a lot of risk in this late rounds, but that's okay. Risk in the late rounds is good. Uh, after Davis, Tyler Algier, J.K. Dobbins, T.J. Hawkinson. That's what I was going to try to snipe in here, but I couldn't get him. Mike Williams, Khalil Shakir, and then Welsh. You went with a New England wide receiver, rookie Jalen Polk. Let's talk about it. It was another situation where I was like, I got my pick all set. Uh, Khalil Shakur, we're just going <laughs> to lock him in. And right in front of me, I, I just have a baffled look on my face. But I had Shakir <laughs> and I had uh, Jalen Polk both as my guys. Jalen Polk going to be able to serve uh, as one of the primary wide receivers in this offense. We heard a lot of good things from Erickson doing the show with Erickson that I do. It was a pretty easy pivot for me, but still kind of a like, you got to be kidding me. What the hell is going on situation, which well, I feel I, like I'm living every pick. Uh, well, you can go ahead and make another one here. Uh, one, uh, I took the the only uh, worthy wide receiver right now, in my opinion, the wide receivers of the New England Patriots. Demario Pop Douglas at 1209. Roshan Johnson goes at 1210. Xavier Leggett is at 1211. Dallas Goddard at 1212. Then Gabe Davis to start the 13th round, followed by Michael Wilson. Jalen Wright, who I was hoping would make it to me. He did not. Instead, I took Elijah Mitchell because when Christian McCaffrey goes down after 400-plus carries last year and touches, uh, Elijah Mitchell is going to be very valuable to me. Bucky Irving goes next, Welsh. So was that the plan all along, or did you want Mitchell or Wright? Oh, no, uh, Jalen Wright was 1,000% <laughs> the pick. Yeah, I mean, just, do, yeah. <laughs> just look within two picks of where I am and just know like, oh, that was one of the guys that you wanted. 100% I wanted Jalen Wright. I want upside running backs here. I think there's quite a few, but there's just a tier difference. Like Wright's upside that was exponentially bigger than the other couple young running backs that are out there. And, you know, you're just kind of like, 
uh, praying, hoping on a dream here. And I wasn't what I wanted whatsoever. There was a couple of boring running backs. Uh, Antonio Gibson has been just not picked and kind of, he's been at the top of uh, the fantasy pros board here for a while, but I wanted to go big upside. I didn't get it. Bucky Irving though, if anything happens with Rashad White, you know, he could end up being the guy. So that's what this mm-hmm. play is as I think that's my fifth running back. So it's not a, it's not a bad play. Just Jalen Wright would have looked a lot better as that fifth running back. Yeah, well, I would agree. And I think we're both irritated at McFly flow, who is a, or McFly low, I should say. So he's, uh, he's got me a few times or she's got me a few times. One of them, whoever Mick is, got me a few times. Quentin Johnson goes next. Adonai Mitchell, then Jermaine Burton. Roman Wilson goes next. Then uh, Kamani Vidal. Uh, Estime to Scott Bogman. Boggs, uh, hedging your bets here in the Bronco backfield. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Estime's role is pretty clear. He is the big back. He's the short yardage back, maybe goal line back as well. Um, it's between Javante and Jaleel for that other spot to me. So I'm not messing with that. I'm getting the short yardage guy and the more guaranteed touches. So uh, I'll take Estime. I think he's a good value late to throw a dart on. Okay. After you made your selection, we go back to Wonky for two picks, Damian Pierce, and then Ricky Pearsall. So Pearsall's hamstring seems like it's a minimal thing. No panic there. If indeed, Wonky, we do get a, a Nayuk solution that is not him as a 49er. Pearsall, his value in the 14th round looks pretty good. Not yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. And I also did the update today that he returned to practice full pads. So I'm trusting him more than a 14th rounder. So. And yes, yeah, I know. I know. Farting Welsh. noise was that Bogman or Welsh? There? No, that was that... Welsh because you insulted him. Oh no, no, just because you because I said Ayuk might be somewhere else, mm-hmm. and he just because he's not going. He's not going to be traded. <laughs> he's not going to be traded. I've said it all off season. Every I'm show trying I can, to build drama. Be I'm a host of a podcast about fantasy football. That's true. I'm trying to build That's some true. drama here, man. That's true. Gosh, this is a tough room. Jeez, here. I just want reality. What about Damian Pierce? I mean, a couple years ago, this was a guy who was. Uh, you know, looked like a really solid running back. Then he fell apart in his rookie season at the very end, which was understandable. And then last year, things did not go well, but there were a ton of injuries in the offensive line. Then they bring in Joe Mixon this offseason. So again, this is more just, you know, going that zero RB and taking more depth, right? Yes, for sure. And Mixon hasn't practiced, I don't think, like in a while. Um, so <laughs> I, so again, I'm just kind of looking, and, and I'm not counting on these guys to get injured because anyone can get injured at any time. It's just more like, these seem like the obvious backups. So that's where I'm at. And all the talk from the Texan staff is how much they love Damian Pierce still. Like they are absolutely not giving up on him by right. us, you know, going out to get Joe Mixon. So uh, they still really like him. Anything happens to Mixon, Pierce is for sure the next guy up. Uh, Boggs, after Kelly took um, Ricky Pierce, all you took, uh, I'm sorry, you know, Troy Franklin, the, uh, the best friend of Bo Nix. So can Franklin as a rookie, uh, be that number two guy potentially in this Broncos offense. Look at you, back-to-back Broncos. That's got to feel great. Yeah, you know things are going well when yeah, you cool. take back-to-back Broncos with Jeez. Bo Nix at the helm. Uh, look, I just think there's opportunity, right? there. It's Marvin Mims. It's the ghost of Tim Patrick. It's uh, Cortland Sutton who wants to be traded. So there's just not a lot there in Denver. Someone has to catch the football. And Troy Franklin and Bo Nix already have built a rapport. Uh, to be honest, I was between... Troy Franklin and who you just selected Adam Thielen because it is PPR and Adam Thielen is a hundred. He's, you know, (laughs) almost Joe's age. So uh, he's very old, but he still is catching a lot of passes. And Deontay's a big old crybaby. So uh, Adam Thielen (laughs) might be pretty decent this season. It's a good combination of things. Uh, All right. Welsh, who was your last pick of this final round? I just had to jump in and get, uh, there were a couple like elite, quarterback yeah i know like quarterbacks you can stream and stuff like that in leagues like this but there were just like one or two guys that i thought were just such a tier uh higher than the rest i decided to go with trevor lawrence i was going to go with two or trevor lawrence here a lot of the buzzy back end guys had already been taken so i thought i would see if i could uh manipulate the algorithm a little bit all right what you've all been waiting for the grades i got an a minus thank you draft wizard apparently uh it appreciates the maturity of my roster, uh, mm-hmm. especially after taking, as you said, uh, Adam Thielen with my last pick. Welsh, what did Draft Wizard give you as a grade? I got a B minus. It wasn't okay. in love. Um, you know, this might be a age over beauty situation. Joe, you're at mm-hmm. the top, and uh, 
I finished uh, from an, a beauty perspective a little bit higher than uh, two of our contestants here. But yeah, it, I don't think it was absolutely in love. We can talk about the insights when we get there, but it's, it's a kind of a middling projected team. Uh, Scott Bogman, you finished just ahead of the Welsh, 785 to 772. Mm. Say uh, that part again. Uh, you finished just <laughs> ahead of the Welsh, 785 to 772. Great. I felt like Bob Euchre for a second there. Uh, and Wonky <laughs> Penguin. It's a good thing you're the best uh, ranker in, you know, pretty much the fantasy football universe because it was a rough draft for you. Uh, so I guess here's the thing. Are you writing a strongly worded letter, letter I should say, to Andrew Erickson after this? Uh, maybe using his cheat sheet was not the best thing here. No, I mean, I, I think Fitz is also to blame. So I might yeah, let's blame hit, I might hit you know him what? both that sounds up. Good. He's um, so nice and personable and, and professional. Let's let's throw some shade at him for a change. Can right. You, you know, I mean, nice. it's like I might be having lunch with him next week and he'll just hear all about it. But I know it will <laughs> it, it will shock all of you that um, it hates everything about my draft aside from my wide receivers in which I'm in first for. So that's great. But as you should be. I mean, yeah. I, I still think that. I, look, I'm a big proponent of the heavy wide receiver build. I know the other two guys in this draft are more running back heavy fellas, and and that's okay, and that, that's what makes this all fun. Sam Hoppin, by the way, our own, hated my draft. You know what the worst thing, too, is about that lunch when you tell him, Fitz, your cheat sheet let me down or whatever it was? He would say, he would say, oh, I'm so sorry. He would apologize, and then he'd buy you lunch. God, he's the worst. <laughs> this is what I'm hoping for. So <laughs> I love if so I can much. fake some tears, I'll find him. But, yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, so – uh bogman any insights to your draft any experts that loved or hated yours because i have to uh slack sam hoppin after this and uh, message him and ask him what the hell's up with you man why are you doing this to me well fitz liked mine and it was uh it only has one thumbs up for one player and it was malik neighbors so uh <laughs> fitz and i have spoken uh ad nauseum uh about malik neighbors so we both like him d bro hated my draft didn't like kelsey didn't like Jaden reed didn't like DeAndre Hopkins. He gave me a D, but Fitz gave me a B plus, and my grade was a, a B, kind of middling. And you know what, Wonky? Let's just call this the Bogman Revenge Draft because we're both on the end. You didn't bother me that much outside of the first round, and I scored better than you. So yeah, I feel like we're, we're back to even now. So we can separate in the next mock draft. We don't have to be next to each other. We can all live in harmony and hold hands. It'll You're be just in such a hurry to not have to compete with me. So I figured I'd throw <laughs> one to you. So oh, then that's it. On the oh, next oh, one, me. we're just back. I think you guys should do one, two next time. That's what I, I want to see you guys do. Oh, one we should time do one, two. <laughs> yeah, one, two, not 11, 12. That's boring stuff. Go to the one, two. Let's really dance. Um, the winner of this draft, by the way, was none of us. It was Hudat, 31, finished in first. I finished in third there, 816. Uh, points there for me. Uh, Welsh expert opinions, and then we'll break down your draft first. Yeah, uh, Pierre Camus loved mine the most. That actually is a trend. I, I feel like I don't know why. Like every great time I've ever too. do it, Jeff. I'm pretty yeah, sure Pierre. he was doing some of the coverage in the Olympics in France. Pierre yeah, Camus. Pierre always liked mine. <laughs> Sam oh. Hoppen did like my draft. Right. By the way, I'll say he was one of the top five. Also, uh, former co-host on the live streams on Sunday, Tara Roberts loved yeah. my draft. Uh, Adam know. Dove hated me. Mark Ringo also hates me. Joe Serpico wants me in the river. So that's it. So they all do not like me. Adam Dove specifically gave me an F. And the common denominator, if you loved my draft, it was most likely about Zay Flowers. If you hated my draft, it was about Sam Laporta and Zay Flowers. So Zay Flowers say, was the common denominator. I thought there was a big setup up there where you guys say, and if you hated my draft, it was also about It Zay was. It, the, the, like literally <laughs> the players, players that are said mm -hmm. are Sam Laporta and Zay Flowers are almost all opposite ends of the uh, loves and hates. Well, let's talk about the CJ Stroud coming off a great year as your quarterback. Bijan, Tony Pollard. If Tony Pollard bounces back to anything close from 2022, this is a really formidable backfield. You have Mike Evans, who again, steady as she goes. Same with Devonta Smith, Zay Flowers, a very steady balanced team with Laporta. Whenever you go early tight end, you're always going to probably, if you went early running back, you're going to be hurting a little wide receiver, but I don't think that much. You've got all twos and, and, and a one here. That's a pretty good space to be in. Roma Dunze is the flex, so there's upside there. Then Lawrence, Eckler, Dobbs, uh, Rico Dowdle, Jalen Polk, and Bucky Irving. So Welsh, I think overall, 
this is a roster that you would certainly go into the season with. Yeah, I think um, it was under uh, valued or under ranked maybe in this format. I think it's better than maybe obviously what is put on paper. I'm not in love with it though. Like Tony Pollard as the the second running back is a big hole. And then like the next step was me putting Austin Eckler. Those guys are almost like in a, in a same situation where it's like, yeah, if everything works out, they could be good, but they're both in these committees. Dowdle could maybe set up, but like I didn't do the best job creating this really great running back core when I had an early investment on it. So I don't love that, but having Bijan be the guy that is going to be the centerfold of this, I got fantastic core run, uh, wide receivers. I didn't sacrifice there. I got upside. Mm -hmm. Dobbs is a guy I can get in there if Adunze wasn't doing well, but Adunze is my four. I got the best tight end. I got a huge value on quarterback. This is actually a pretty great week to week team with minimal Steady things floor. to pick on. Minimal right? things Steady to pick floor. on. And if you have some big yeah. Stroud games or Bijan games, like if Bijan just goes out of his mind this year, I think you'd be in very good spot. Also, it's Let's where if you were to hit the waivers and we were able to benefit sure. like week one or two on like a running back that's available, something like that, or or Elliott going down and Dowdle becoming the number one why, uh, running back, that could be the game changer to this floor team. So well, basically what you're saying is all you need is like, you know, the next Puka Naku off the waiver wire to, to, yeah, to easy, win this league. Yeah, easy, easy oh, enough. That's easy enough. Well, yeah, like me, me and Bogman shared a team last year. As long <laughs> as I'm there, I'll spend all the fab on it. That was, our, that was our big thing. We had Bachman cash in a big league, and we had this big argument about Puka, and I was like, we, we didn't have an that. argument. It you, wasn't You argument. just spent the money. I just did uh, it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, didn't ask me at all. <laughs> and I went, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's all I said, but it did. It worked. It did. So, Thank God. It, Thank God. It, it did. All right. Let's go to Kelly's team. Jaden Daniels, James Cook, uh, Najee Harris, then Puka Nakua, Marvin Harrison, DK Metcalf. Ooh, wee, that's a good wide receiver core. Pat Fryermuth, then Deontay Johnson. Again, the wide receiver depth here. Hollywood Brown on the bench, Palmer on the bench. Penguin, I feel like you could take some of this wide receiver depth at any time and turn it into running backs if you wanted to, and I think that's perfectly okay. Trey Benson, Ty Chandler, Damian Pierce, Ricky Pearsall. So looking back on it, forget the grades. How do you feel about this roster? I mean, I think that once I realized I was out of the running back market that, yeah, I just started loading up on like somewhat veteran receivers who might do better and I could possibly flip them even for just like kind of a lower tier running back that starts. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, I was going to get nailed on Jaden Daniels because I think he was like ranked 12th. So that was never going to help me. But I just feel like a lot of times with mock drafts, you're trying to find the guys that you want. And yes. Yeah and who you believe in and this is definitely not that team for me but it was the team that i got so here we are <laughs> <laughs> i love the dry setup on that one uh yeah really good uh but it, i think for all drafts it's adp is a guideline everyone it's mm -hmm. not truth it's just a guideline it's a suggestion it's polling that's all it is and the, the consensus sometimes is right and the consensus sometimes is wrong but it certainly helps to flex those muscles and try to do some of these mock drafts, which is why we want to tell everybody again, mock draft Mondays, free, fantasypros.com slash Monday. Join in, have some fun. You could be on one of these shows with us too and do these mocks. Let's go to Bogman's team here real quick. Boggs, Dak Prescott, Jameer Gibbs, Jonathan Taylor, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Reed, DeAndre Hopkins. So love the running back room because you also got Ramondre Stevenson too. Oh yeah, and that guy Travis Kelsey with Keon Coleman on the bench here. You've got Nick Chubb waiting in the wings. Dotson, Franklin, Ray Davis, and Audric Estime. I would think at some point there's a Nick Chubb trade for DK Metcalf that could possibly happen between the two <laughs> of you. Kelly, Boggs, can we foster that maybe potentially week seven? I mean, I feel like. I yeah. mean, it's got to be Nick Chubb has to show that he's good again for Kelly mm -hmm. to want to do that trade, but that is absolutely a trade that could be in the works here. You but know. if they add leg presses or whatever it is to the fantasy world, then I'll yeah. trade you right mm -hmm. now. Definitely points. Oh, per okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, but uh, I, I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> Every single one of my wide receivers could be a number one outside of Dotson. I, I think that is something that could happen. So while I waited to take wide receivers, I did take them in good spots. Um, my running backs are solid. I have good backups, obviously. And I thought I got, uh, you know, obviously one of the best tight ends. I got the number two and a quarterback that I feel like is good and might be undervalued this season in Dak Prescott. So I really like this team I put together. All right, Boggs, I'm going to ask you your thoughts on my roster because I basically drafted the Ravens, and I know how much you love the Ravens. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Zamir White, Tyreek Hill, Michael Pittman, Calvin Ridley, Mark Andrews. So there you go. Andrews, Lamar, 
Derrick Henry. I control all the scoring on the Ravens. So whatever happens, it's all going to me. Whatever the points are. If they get shut out, it's gonna be a bad week. I hope I'm playing uh, you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one bad bye week for sure. Uh, Cortland Sutton, Jacoby Myers, Zeke Elliott, Adam Thielen, Pop Douglas, Elijah Mitchell, and Dontavian Wicks. Boggs, what do you think of this roster here too? Which, again, it was an inadvertent stack. It just so happens that's the value on the board. But uh, when you're talking about scoring, Lamar, Derrick Henry, Mark Andrews, at the value I got them seemed pretty good to me at the time. But what do you think about them? I think the only thing I would change on your team is one of – uh, we took Cortland and Myers. I'm probably reaching for a running back there. So Zeke mm. isn't my next guy up. Should sure. something happen to Henry or Zamir white? I think that's really the only hole to poke with this team. I love the wide receivers. You got, uh, three potential number ones. Mark Andrews is great at tight end. You got a premium quarterback. Uh, the bench is pretty solid. The one hole to poke really is that second running back spot because yeah. Amir White was great in his, you know, getting all that volume. And that's what we expect from him this season. But if he does falter, your next backup is the ghost of Zeke past. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to end up being great. Yeah. That's the one hole to pick. Everything else is really good here. There you go. Well, who do you think won the draft? For those of you watching on the YouTube channel, let us know in the comments below who was the big winner today or maybe the big loser, whatever it is, whose draft did you like to? Uh, from all of our listeners who joined us today. Again, congrats to Hudat31 for winning the draft. And Young City, you came in a very close second, but just missed it. Again, if you want to be part of this, join our Discord, fantasypros.com slash chat, or just go to fantasypros.com slash Monday. If you've got a case of the Mondays, we've got a mock draft to cure that. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Kelly and Welsh and Boggs. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Happy mocking.